is Augustine. And Augustine lived in approximately the fourth century. And Augustine's uh, mother was a Christian Catholic. Augustine's father was a pagan. That means that if he believed in anything, he believed in all the many different Roman gods that the uh, people of Rome of that time believed in. You remember all those from your schooling, like, uh, I always get them confused with the Greek gods. Uh, Apollo, was he Roman or was he Greek? Greek. Greek. Mars, I think, was, Mars was, was Roman, <laughs> right? So all those different uh, uh, Greek gods and so forth. And Augustine himself was a pagan. He was not baptized as a baby, like it is our practice to do now. Uh, and he was um, not really raised in uh, religion. But Augustine was very smart, brilliant, in fact. Uh, a brilliant student, and he became a professor in Rome at a very young age. But Augustine, as successful as he was at the time, uh, had a dark side to him. He liked to drink a lot. He was known to give himself over to sexual excess a lot. He had mistresses. Uh, and he sort of lived, obviously, a very uh, libertine life. And as he went through his life, he started to recognize that he was unhappy. You know, here he was, a successful professor. He had seemingly all the pleasures that the world could offer him at his fingertips. And yet, he was unhappy. Uh, he was searching. He was restless. He was restless in his spirit. He was restless in his mind because he kind of thought he knew what the truth was and then he'd go from one thing to the other, to the other, to the other, uh, and to the other. And through a series of events, God drew him to himself. And once Augustine realized that God was calling him, he left this uh, life behind. Now, he did that gradually. He didn't do it in one step. It took him a while to let go of these various vices that he had. But eventually, with God's help and through God's call, he said yes to God. And he was baptized at the age of 33. Which is kind of ironic, because if some of you don't uh, know or realize, that's the age that Jesus died on the cross. So there's at least a symbolic connection between this conversion of St. Augustine. Oh, I gave it away. This conversion of Augustine and the life of Christ. And there was another fellow that was quite active in uh, his... Augustine's conversion, and his name was Ambrose, and he was a bishop. He was the bishop of Milan, and Augustine would go to hear him preach, and it was through a, a lot through uh, Ambrose's, Bishop Ambrose's uh, preaching that Augustine realized that God was calling him. Eventually, Augustine was ordained a priest and made a bishop. So what a turnaround, huh? Going from a life with concubines, and he even had a child by one of the concubines who, who died. Uh, drinking, and oh, he, I forgot to throw in gambling. He was, <laughs> he was a big gambler, too. Uh, drinking and gambling and sexual excess to being a, a Catholic bishop uh, in the church. And he wrote a book called The Confessions. And in those days, that word confessions meant autobiography. So that's what it is, an autobiography. And his famous line in his confessions, when he was reflecting back, he wrote this when he was a bishop, when he was reflecting back on his pagan life, how he was unhappy and searching and restless, his famous line was this. You might want to write this down, because this is great. 
Our hearts are restless, O oh God. Our hearts are restless, O oh God, until they rest in you. Our hearts are restless, O oh God, until they rest in you. And this is really the great truth about human existence. This really is the meaning of life. You didn't know you were going to come here to discover the meaning of life, did you? <laughs> well, here you are. This I'm going to tell you right now uh, the meaning of life. If we ask that question, why do I exist? Why do I exist? Can you all see here? Am I blocking your thing? Why do I exist? The answer to this question is this. To know, love, and serve God. The answer is actually a little longer, but we're going to just stick with this tonight. To know, love, and serve God. That's why I exist. And what Augustine was, was discovered through his life is that because he wasn't living in a way to try to know God, to try to love Him, and to try to serve Him, he was unhappy. He was restless. He was searching. He was only serving himself. And that got him nowhere. And it led him only to unhappiness. So, you know, Augustine discovered the meaning of life. To know, love, and serve God. And when we do this, this brings us true happiness. Oops. This brings us true happiness. Why? It's because we were created for this. You know, to use a, an image that we often use with teenagers when we're, when we're talking about this, is that spiritually, God created us with a hole in our hearts. And there's only one thing that fits in that hole. God. Only God fits in that hole. Only God will bring us the, the happiness and the completeness for which we long. And as we know in our world, and we do it too through sin, is that humans are great at trying to shove other things in that hole. I mean, we are the masters of it. <laughs> you know, drugs, alcohol, sexual excess, money, power, you know, you know the whole list. You know, uh, we try to shove other things in that hole, but nothing fits. Nothing fits except for God. And this brings true happiness when we find it. Now, this uh, shows us a couple things that uh, not only do we a answer the question, you know, why do I exist, so forth and so on, it shows us something about God. That God created us to share himself. You know, why did God create us? Because he wanted us to share with him, not because he needed to, but because he's so good. He created us to share uh, himself. And it also shows us that we have free, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that we have free will. That we can choose to say yes to God and accept what he asks of us and how he's created us, or we can say no to God and reject him and reject what he, um, he offers us. He doesn't want us to be his little puppets. We'll get into that more later in another class. So for right now, we'll just talk about that, that we have free will. And besides this, 
We seek this. You know, like Augustine here was searching his whole life. There's a part of us that seeks this. And dare I say, that's the reason you're all here. Is because deep down, in your being, God wrote this in you. To seek Him. It's in all, every one of us. Now, some people deny that, you know, because of various reasons. It's part of the mystery of free will and rejecting God and so forth. But it's written in us to, to seek Him. Okay. That's the introduction. That's a lot of stuff. How are we doing so far? Yes. <clears throat> Do we ever really truly fill that hole? When we get to heaven, yes. I, I think the answer to that is no. It's not possible because we will we do not have we cannot have in this life God fully. Well, that's what heaven is. That that's exactly what heaven is. It's being filled with God perfectly. So while we live here, uh, no, that's not possible. However, there's a lot that is possible here that prepares us for heaven. You see, the Lord gives us himself in certain measures. Now, all of us are unique, too. God, our relationship with God is unique, so every person is, I don't know if you want to put it in these terms, it's hard to put it in these terms, but filled differently or filled uniquely or however you want to put it. We're all on our own journey, if that makes sense. But but that, even, even in, in the... Um, I don't want to use the word limited, but the smaller way, if you will, that God fills us now prepares us for the perfect filling in eternal life. Any other questions? I know we always start out really quiet. <laughs> and then by the fifth class, I can't show you. Up, so. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. Now, the question we can ask is that... In order to know, love, and serve God, what has to happen? Well, the first thing is, is that God has to reveal himself. Because if God didn't reveal himself, when I say reveal, I mean he reveals who he is. If God doesn't reveal himself, then we wouldn't know who to know, right? We wouldn't know who to love. We wouldn't know who to serve. I mean, you could think of, I guess, analogously as two people who want to get married, okay? If they only had, uh, were in each other's presence behind a screen and they weren't allowed to talk to each other, it'd be pretty hard for them to get to know each other in order to see if they wanted to marry the other person. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so if God doesn't show us himself, then we couldn't know, love, and serve him. And God does this. And we call this, write this down, I'm going to come back to this over and over and over again. And I'm going to ask you over and over and over again. We call this divine revelation. Divine uh, is the, the adjective meaning of God or God and revelation to reveal himself. So divine revelation.